Welcome both. Anne, Sandra, all yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Sandra Timon. I am from Madrid, Spain. And I'm currently working as a modern workplace consultant at Microsoft, specialized in the accessibility of Microsoft 365 solutions. And moreover, as the presenter said, I'm a person with a blindness because of the Wolfram syndrome, a very rare ne neurodegenerative disease. Uh, so because of my personal condition, of my personal situation of uh, some with disabilities, I'm a knowledge about software engineering because I studied software engineering. I love how accessible technologies empowers everyone to achieve more. And especially, uh, I love uh, artificial intelligence and how AI uh, empower especially people with disabilities to achieve things that wouldn't be possible in the real or physical world. Like, for example, allowing a person with a cerebral palsy to communicate and to interact with the computer by using their eyes with the use of Windows Eye Control. And, well, you may be wondering yourself how I can communicate if I'm a person uh, with um, uh, hearing disabilities, okay, the, um, with a <laughs> great he uh, hearing disability, and how I can use the computer if I'm blind. So, well, uh, I can listen to people because I'm wearing a cochlear implant on my left ear and a hearing aid on my right one. And I can work with the computer because I use uh, two assistive technologies. Firstly, I use the screen reader, which is the software that transcripts the textual information that appears on the screen into Braille or voice synthesis. In my case, I use Braille because of my hearing disability. I feel more comfortable uh, reading Braille. And secondly, I use the Braille displays, which is the, so, the hardware device that uh, allows me to read that Braille information written, the generated by the, by the screen reader. So I would like to uh, let you know why I decided to, to study software engineering, uh, having uh, been a person with the blindness. Because uh, before deciding to study this degree, I wanted to be a mathematics teacher. But from onset, the National, National Organization for blind, blind People in Spain, they told me basically I was crazy, okay, <laughs> and, 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 and they told a standard. But you can see the blackboard, uh, blackboard and most of the lesson will take uh, will take place on the black on the back, um, blackboard, and it will be quite challenging for you to follow the the, the lessons. So uh, I stopped and start, uh, started thinking. Okay, and I, I thought that um, additionally to that uh, um, reason uh, that may, um, might not be a good idea for me. A uh, mathematics degree would have less job opportunities than uh, other uh, in careers. So they suggested me to study uh, computer science because they told me it would be more accessible and easy for me to, to get this degree. And I uh, started considering the degree basically f because of three main reasons. Firstly, because I always liked the STEAM careers. And people told me that if I liked mathematics, I would love programming. And they were totally right. I love programming. Secondly, because um, computer science will have uh, more job opportunities compared to mathema the mathematics degree. And lastly, because I thought I could use my knowledge about software to create accessible software to, to help create a more inclusive world for people with disabilities. So finally, I chose this degree, and honestly, I think it was one of the best decisions I could make in my life. And well, then I would like to, to um, talk shortly about, briefly about my um, job, uh, work, uh, my job journey. Okay, and um, I started working uh, as a software engineer in an artificial intelligence group in the university. I was working in, in, that, um, in that group for two years. And then I started thinking I would like to join an international um, company because I could use my knowledge about accessibility to provide value for a, for a broader audience. So I liked a lot uh, Microsoft because uh, uh, our solutions, you know, the with Windows operating system, Office 365 uh, tools and so on are globally used. So thought I could um, provide my, my, my knowledge to improve the accessibility of these, uh, of these tools. 
So finally I joined the, the company and honestly I was quite worried because of uh, joining a huge company <laughs> with a lot of uh, employees, everyone very busy and people who were not used to working with colleagues with visible disabilities like me. So uh, suddenly I, <laughs> I realized uh, very quickly that I was totally wrong that everyone was really willing to support me in my onboarding and they were looking forward to, to learning about inclusive best practices to, to better support me. So uh, we started accommodating the office, the physical environment, because I faced some challenges when, when I uh, entered for the first time there. Uh, for example, uh, coffee machines and, and machines for, to drink water have a um, attached screen, so <laughs> Imagine I couldn't use them uh, because I, I didn't know where the, the buttons were. So we thought that maybe using some stickers would be helpful for me to have a physical reference to easily find with my fingers the, the buttons. Or for example, we also uh, changed a little bit our culture because at Microsoft everyone sits where they want every, every day. Uh, we don't have uh, an, uh, an any seats assigned. So I thought, oh my god, one day uh, I may sit on, on the legs of a colleague if they are using some, some headset and, and ask them if the chair is available and they don't answer, answer me. So we blocked that seat for me. Um, well, uh, many other <laughs> accommodations we, we worked with. And on the other hand, uh, it's not only about adapting, uh, accommodating the physical environment, but also about uh, creating an inclusive culture so everyone started uh, working to increase the, um, the um, culture, the, incl the inclusive, uh, create a more inclusive culture, and to share um, best practices to be more inclusive. So uh, everyone, not only me, any other employees that may have some other non-visible disability, um, all of us could be our, be uh, our best at work. So now I would like my colleague Anne to introduce herself. Anne, the floor is yours. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Ani Turzaeta. I'm a customer engineer in data and artificial intelligence in Microsoft. And uh, I love AI, so it's my day-to-day -day life. So I try to transmit that, that passion for AI that I have to my, to my customers. However, I'm not here only for that AI passion, which I have, of course. Uh, it's because I was Sandra's mentor when she joined Microsoft. So I was onboarding her, I was um, in her own in, in all this transition, uh, which I can tell that it hasn't been an easy journey. Like uh, you can now see us like talking about all these accommodations and everything that we will talk about in even in a funny or, or, or like in a positive way. But it was quite uh, frustrating and it was like a complicated uh, <laughs> uh, thing. So yeah, I'm here just to, to, to share all that, all that experience. So when my manager told me uh, almost three years ago that uh, someone with uh, some hard hearing and blindness would join the team uh, and that I would be her mentor in all her onboarding, uh, I was in shock. So uh, for me, it was something completely new. Uh, I just had questions. Uh, I knew nothing about what would that involve. Uh, but I think at the same time, I had that willingness to, to like uh, have this new experience, to meet Sandra, to be together. So I think uh, that's where everything started. So uh, I had lots of questions, like uh, if she's hard hearing and blind, uh, how does she talk? Like, does she talk? How does she communicate? How does she use the computer? How does she program? Because I knew she was a great programmer. So uh, I had lots of questions. But again, um, all that um, like lack of knowledge that I had made me more uh, attracted to what was going to, to happen uh, with, with Sandra and I was super happy to, to be on that, on that uh, path with, with her. So just to tell you also a bit how it is Sandra's personality, uh, I can tell you at first she's really positive about everything that is going on, but also she's really challenging. So the first day that I met her, Sandra was talking, then I discovered that she could talk, of course, like <laughs> normally. Uh, so. Um, on on esto that day she was talking and then she said oh but you don't know what's a braille display of course i didn't so i said no sandra i have no idea about like anything i said actually uh, i want to learn it all so also i think it's a journey of learning so it, it, of course there are frustrations of course there's uh, things that yeah could be better or we are still improving but it's a lot of uh, learning that that we have done so that's a bit about my personal experience but i would say that for 
our super team and the company in general in, in Spain, uh, it has been a bit the same. So at first it was a lot about uh, uh, shock or fear, I don't know how to call it, uh, but yeah, it was just uh, like not knowing what would that involve. And any of us uh, wanted to do something not appropriate, like we wanted to control what we were saying, how to treat Sandra, like we want to be really uh, welcoming. So uh, at the end, everything resulted in uh, actually uh, bringing like good energy to the team so we went more together uh, uh, we were making fun like uh, so for example Sandra wanted to to know how each of the members were so we were describing each other so I was saying like uh, Felipe it's around 40 and like today uh, Alvaro uh, didn't sleep well because his his face it's not very good or, or something like that so we were having uh, a bit of uh, a bit of fun in those in those situations so it was funny but then we realized that um, all that, uh, like the, the big process, the big challenge would come after. So then we saw that everything that we were doing as a team needed to change or needed to evolve. So from the emails that we were uh, sending, the content that we were uh, sharing to each other, all our meetings, everything needed to be transformed and adapted to the different needs that Sandra was, was bringing. So just as an anecdote, I would say, uh, just when Sandra arrived, we were going to go to Gran Vía to watch a musical as our team building event. And uh, of course, we couldn't be on that uh, with Sandra because Sandra couldn't enjoy as much as, as uh, that uh, activity maybe. So we changed it or we replaced it for a blind dinner. So actually in the PowerPoint, you can see uh, the, the first image on the, on the left that that's uh, some of our colleagues you know, on that blind uh, dinner where we could all play the game of seeing what we were eating or like uh, guessing what we were eating with the same advantages. So that was one of the first things that we started to, to adapt. Um, what else? Uh, also for the meetings. So uh, more especially, uh, we needed to, to, to focus on how to make all those uh, meetings more, more inclusive. So for that, let's start maybe um, defining what for us uh, or, or, or like how we see the inclusive behavior. We have already mentioned this word more than uh, once, but it means basically to welcome everyone and to make everyone feel part of, 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 of a team or the, or the meeting in which uh, we are so that they can collaborate, they can be free to share their ideas, they can feel comfortable, that's also quite important. So we needed to really promote this inclusive culture so that uh, yeah, everyone like Sandra could be, could be there. Uh, and yeah, for, for meetings, it's, it's at the end the same thing. So uh, making everyone participant so that they could access all the content that there was uh, shared. So here, um, seeing this, you might think like what I can do or what we did uh, when someone with some other needs, new needs that we didn't uh, have before as a team uh, came into the room. So in that case, I would say the first tip, which is something from our experience, from our team's experience, is asking. So we always promote, and now we also do it with our customers, that um, we ask which are the specific needs of people that will be in that meeting, even more if it's remote. So always asking. Actually, for Sandra, we didn't even need to ask, because Sandra already said, OK, I need this, this, and this. So, so we started changing the different behaviors. So um, at the end, it's a small details or a small effort for us, but that can make a, a Sandra fully Sandra or others, of course, fully part of, of the meeting. So things that we do uh, since Sandra joined uh, our team and also the, the whole company. Uh, first, uh, we love PowerPoint slides. So we have like PowerPoint slides in, in almost all our meetings. Uh, and also, more in our field at least, we love diagrams, we love visual things, we love like expressing everything visually. So I can tell you that for Sandra, those diagrams are useless. She does, she sees nothing. So uh, for us, maybe it was better to have some colors and some like nice shapes in the slides, but not for her. So we started by describing all the PowerPoint slides, for example, that were uh, presented in a meeting so that she could have that ground uh, base the same as ours. And then we started discussing, we started talking about whatever, but we were describing everything that, that was um, going on. Also for offline communication so for example emails that we are sending we avoid sending a screenshot because again for sandra a screenshot it's 
a pain at the end because she cannot understand uh, what's inside that screenshot. And we try to make everything uh, in a descriptive text so that she can read it with a, a, a screen reader that, that she mentioned uh, before. So that has been a big change. Uh, also, as I said, for remote meetings, it has been like another uh, tsunami, <laughs> we, we kind of call it. So uh, also a small tips that, that we now know that we need to do with, with Sandra. Again, for other people, we just need to ask and others will say what they need to, to feel included. So for her, for example, uh, it's mandatory, I would say, to use headphones with microphone or a good microphone when, when being in a Teams meeting, for example, uh, so that she can hear uh, the voices much, much better. And also, uh, it looks like something really, I don't know, like simple or whatever, but we say our name uh, whenever we start talking. So when we are in a meeting, even if it's in person or if it's uh, in remote, we always say like, hey, I, I am Anne, and then I start talking. Because for Sandra, it's complicated to uh, link the voices and more if she doesn't know the voices with the, the, the actual person. So that's, those small things can make a, a great difference. So that was my, my, my message here, like a small things that we need to ask others what they need that then will make others uh, yeah, like part of that meeting or part of the environment. So uh, now Sandra will get more into the AI topics, which we wanted to, to talk about. So at the end, uh, we can have some inclusive behaviors. We can do some actions in purpose. But then there is AI who can make some extra, uh, extra power. It can bring us some extra power to make all those things uh, better. So Sandra. Yeah, thanks, Annie. So let's let's talk about a little bit more about uh, AI for accessibility, okay? Because um, you know we have a lot of accessibility tools and features, and uh, access, uh, artificial intelligence can add a layer of personalization to those tools to switch better the the needs and preferences of every user. And these accessibility tools can empower us to, to be our best at the workspace and, and in, in even in, in our personal life. Like in the example I mentioned at the beginning for a person with uh, cerebral palsy that uh, before couldn't communicate and now uh, using their eyes they can, they can use the mouse pointer, uh, uh, type on the, on, on, the uh, on the screen keyboard and, and use text to speech to, to communicate with other persons. So this is wonderful. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, accessibility tools that they are not only important for people with permanent disability, okay, but for people with temporary and situational disability. At Microsoft, we talk about this classification of three types of, of disabilities, permanent, temporary, and situational, where uh, I suppose you all mm, may uh, know what temporary disability means. Uh, it could be, it might be, for example, that you break your arm and during a shorter or longer period of time, you can use, obviously, one of your abilities of your arms to use the mouse or, or the keyboard. So this is uh, something that ca can happen to, to anyone. But I, I'm curious about knowing if you ever heard of the situational disability, because this is the, the disability, the type that I liked uh, the most. I, I love talking about this type of disability because this is the most common and the one that can affect anyone at any time. Uh, actually, any, any of these disabil uh, disability types I've mentioned, permanent temporary situation, uh, can affect any one of us at, an, uh, at any time. But the third one um, usually happens because of an external uh, factor okay, that uh, cause us not having all of our abilities during uh, in a very specific moment. So I would like to give some examples to clarify what situational disability is. Okay, so the first example uh, might be that you are walking from home and you are holding your child in your arms, so you wouldn't be able to use the, your, uh, your hands to do anything. And for example, you received a, a mobile phone call and you would need to, to answer to it, so you could use speech recognition we see if you have an iPhone, for example, to answer the, the mobile phone call. So this is why accessibility features at the end are useful, beneficial for everyone. Okay. Or, for example, you could even, in this scenario of, of holding your child in your arms, use your voice to dictate the content of an email 
uh, that you need to reply to urgently, for example. And the, um, I would like to, to tell you that uh, speech recognition, that is an accessibility feature that uses artificial intelligence, was originally de designed and developed for people with mobility disability, for patients from the um, rehabilitation medicine in, U in, in New York at the 70s, so they could operate their, their wheelchair with their voice. That is surprising, and this is an example of um, a feature that was initially designed for people with uh, disability, whether permanent or, or temporary, but at the end it's being globally used. It, it's uh, uh, everywhere, okay, the um, speech recognition in our um, cars, computers, mobile phones, and it's being used globally by, by everyone with and without disabilities. Uh, so um, additionally, it's also an example of how accessibility drives innovation by using artificial intelligence. And this is the, the combination no, the, we mentioned at the beginning. It's uh, AI for accessibility. Other example of situational disability quite common, I think, might be that you need to join um, a meeting in, um, while you are in, a, in an airport, for example, and there is a lot of background noise, so you wouldn't be able to listen to it if you forgot taking your headsets. And enabling live captions for this scenario would be really useful for you to be able to better understand what is being said in the, in the meeting, although you can't listen to it properly. And uh, this feature was also uh, designed initially for people with hearing disability, but uh, it's not useful only for, for people with this, kind, with this kind of disability, but also for people who may be with this situational disability of being on a noisy, on, in a noisy environment. And also, it could be beneficial to switch the, the preferences and needs of, uh, of anyone. For example, I have a colleague at Microsoft that he isn't uh, a person with hearing disability and he speaks English very well, but he always enables live caption because he feels more comfortable by receiving information with two senses, with uh, sight and, and hearing. So this is uh, another example of accessibility features that use AI and can benefit everyone. And now, uh, well, I have mentioned some accessibility features. There are all many other <laughs> accessibility features, but I would like to talk about the, the main ones that my colleagues and I use to collaborate more inclusively and to organize uh, inclusive meetings. So firstly, when I, when I join a meeting, I ask my colleagues, apart from using headset, <laughs> okay, the, like I told you, uh, I always ask them to um, enable noise, uh, noise suppression that uses artificial intelligence to remove them in the background noise and only keeps the, the voice. I always turn on also like transcript. This is a feature I, I suggested when I joined Microsoft because uh, I realized that, well, I read quite slowly with my braille display and I never had time to, to read caption in real time. So I thought that uh, having like an historical of all the captions would be really useful for me to be able to review them at my own pace. And even, even I thought it could be beneficial for people with, with, without disabilities, because I always like thinking about things that can benefit everyone, not only people with disabilities, that every, anyone could um, take advantage of this live transcript. If you are, for example, working from home, and suddenly you are disrupted by your children, and then when you try to continue listening to the, to the meeting, you don't understand why, why they are talking about a specific topic and you could review this, this live transcript, the, the previous captions, to understand why they are having that conversation. And I think this is really useful because then you, you get a file, a transcript file that you can download and keep to, to review at any time and, and look for, for specific words or specific parts of the, of the meeting. And lastly, and uh, one of the most important accessibility features for me is that I always uh, ask my colleagues to use to, to run the accessibility checker before sharing the, any document 
uh, mainly PowerPoint presentation, as Anya told, told you that uh, we, we love using PowerPoint decks. So uh, this feature helps you uh, find and fix potential accessibility issues that your presentation may have. Like, for example, setting the proper reading order, because uh, a screen reader user like me, um, we read the, the, the contents in the, of the slide by navigating it with the keyboard, okay, by pressing the top key. And that would be the, the order in which we would read the, the, the content. Um, I mean, the order, the default order, I would read the, the content would be that one in, in which you include the different elements, not necessarily a logical order to understand the content. So accessibility um, checker helps you set the proper, the logical reading order. Also, it helps you identify images that may not provide any alternative description. And uh, with the use of artificial, artificial intelligence, it provides, uh, generates automatically uh, generic descriptions that may be very suitable for, for images that are not very complex. So if you need to, cre to create uh, quickly a, a PowerPoint presentation, it can be really helpful because you don't need to, to type a, a textual description for, for that image. And well, these are the, um, some of the accessibility, accessibility features are the most relevant for me, but I'm sure I'm leaving behind many other interesting accessibility features. But well, <laughs> this is all for me. Anne, what you want? Okay, so now I'll take over and our idea now in this last part, I can say, would be to open a bit our minds and to think a bit outside of what we have been doing with Sandra or her specific needs. So we just collected a few examples uh, and at the end there is our favorite app that we will show you also uh, to see how accessibility can be applied in other contexts. So just few examples to, to, to see how every, all this can be, can be also used. So the first one would be the inclusive classrooms. So at the end, um, nowadays in, in our classrooms, that there could be different types of, of people or children or students that have different needs. Of course, as we say, we always say that uh, there's people with different needs or different preferences that they might have. So imagine, for example, that whenever the professor or the teacher is talking uh, on the back, like on the on the slide that you are seeing on the on the picture, there could be transcripts or, or live captions of everything that, that the professor is saying. So for someone like the colleague of, of Sandra that he prefers to have some voice but also written input, you could have both and maybe you would get the concept a bit better if you are reading also. And imagine there is uh, international students or people that maybe don't control the language so much. We could have also in real time those transcripts in other languages. So the professor or the teacher would be still talking on their own language and at the same time there will be different languages on the on the background the same happens for people for example with with some hearing uh, problems that might want to get the hearing input like some uh, not hearing but visual i was going to say so getting some hearing um, input in other languages so we could have some automatic speech translation and if the professor is talking in spanish and i want to hear the class in english I could I could do that in 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 real time. Um, there's other use cases that we could use. For example, nowadays uh, it's more uh, and more common that uh, we uh, record classes. So imagine instead of having the recording with the MP4, uh, but also a text, as Sandra said, with all the transcripts, I could just like control F, like find whatever word that I want to to go back to and maybe read again what the what the teacher said and have all that um, text written for me, like all the class in text can be quite useful. Again, not only with people with disabilities, but for all of us, I, I guess. And at the end, we were talking about different use cases and we thought about uh, one that might sound a bit more science fiction, but actually uh, it's a reality that Microsoft is, is, is building this. Uh, it's a, a sign language interpreter. So imagine there is someone that uh, wants to have some sign language um, uh, interpreter in the class and that there is no one that could help. So then this translator could translate from sign language to natural language, which is, I, I guess, quite, quite great. And then we wanted to talk about the Immersive Reader, which is a product we think quite 
complete and that it has different features inside of it. It can help or, or we will talk about, for example, for learning purposes or for accelerating the learning of people that maybe might have some, some, some issues there or might have some difficulties to learn in a what we call normal way. So then you can customize your reading experience completely. So in Immersive Reader, it's available in different Office products and also in Edge in the in the in the Vesto browser. So you can select well from simple things like selecting the font, the size, the contrast of the text that you are reading. You can or you also avoid distractions. So imagine I want to read the news today. So instead of having the news page and then all the ads and all the colors and everything uh, there, um, uh, I could uh, have just plain text in the color that I want. Uh, I could even highlight the different uh, words that I want to highlight. I want to highlight verbs or nouns. This is really helpful for, for kids or for people with dyslexia, for example. Uh, also for um, kids in the uh, autism spectrum, they could benefit from some pictograms that are also part of the immersive reader. So, uh, well, I forgot there is in the, in the slide the voice option. Like if I want to read the news, for example, uh, I actually do it sometimes uh, and I am doing other things which happens frequently, I can hear them. So a voice that I choose in the language that, that I select would read through the news. So again, a, another example that anyone in different situations could benefit of these uh, accessibility features. And now a bit more random cases that we want to add also here, but just to cover as we have been focusing a lot in hearing and, and sight uh, issues uh, because of our experience actually, we want to, to go a bit uh, further. So for example, there is an, an app there. You can see it in the, in the left part of the, of the slide, um, which was developed in, in Canada. The idea is to reduce the anxiety of people that now after COVID are going to the streets and they don't want to get uh, into busy streets and getting like less than two, min two meters away from, from people. So the app would tell you which is the best route to go to where you want to go, avoiding the streets which, the streets which might be a bit more uh, full. So it learns from historical data of where people usually flow, or flow and, and it would guide you into the, um, into the best uh, way for you. So the idea here is mental health, which we sometimes forget, but also uh, it's part of the accessibility, uh, accessibility uh, world. Because mental health mm. uh, issues are a part of neural disability, the most common cause uh, today <laughs> for neural disability. So, th so this is an important feature to, to be for, for this kind of uh, different uh, type of disability. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> the other one would be just, and I put this picture because you can see what is a cochlear implant. implant. So the guy who is doing the spinning class is wearing a cochlear implant, which is exactly what Sandra is wearing. So he has some hearing problems, we think. And in this case, he is using some uh, um, spinning classes with uh, the live transcript. So he can be reading what the teacher is doing, uh, is saying to, to do. So it's I, we guess much easier for him to read it through. And then the last one, eye control. We just wanted to, to, to leave it there uh, just to, to say that you can control your computer, everything on your computer, your mouse. You can click, you can interact with your a computer using your eyes. So this is more for motor um, uh, accessibility. It's really useful and, and it's already also there and you can control windows with the eye control. And our favorite app, uh, and I know we are running <laughs> kind of out of time, so we will go quite quite fast. So this is one of the uh, apps that we like the most, if it's not the most. So Cine AI, it's how people with blindness or with some um, sight uh, issues could actually see and could interact with their environment. So Cine AI, it's available as a mobile application. There is some, uh, yeah, some demo there. And you can recognize people. You can uh, see the expression of the people who are around you. You can go on the street and you can see what's around you. Like if, if it's like trees, if it's uh, a park, if there's children, if there's people doing sports, you can do all that. Also, uh, doing the groceries, for example, or going to a restaurant might be quite challenging, uh, Sandra knows. <laughs> so for, for those cases, Cine AI can help for example, Sandra, as you can see right now in the in the in the video, to scan a product and it would tell you, okay, this is tomato, this is uh, like whatever product, and also in the restaurant menus, like it would read you 
which are the options, so you don't need to ask someone to, to, to read it through. Uh, it's a matter of gaining uh, autonomy at the end, so this app in, in that case is in production and it's, and it's quite good. And also for currency, so this is something also Sandra uses quite a lot to see how much money she has, so uh, <laughs> I guess that's something quite, quite useful too. So maybe we're gonna close, uh, Sandra, with the last reflection that we had. I would like you to, to share a final uh, conclusion, a, a final reflection, and is that artificial intelligence seeks not to replace people and the work they do, but to complement it. I mean, in the example that uh, Anne told you about the, the translation tool between sign language and natural language, that tool wouldn't cease to replace the sign language interpreter because artificial intelligence is not perfect, but in the case that uh, there is no um, sign language interpreter available in that specific situation, it can actually help a person with deafness to be more autonomous. So artificial intelligence can, uh, is to uh, help us uh, make things easier and, and to be more autonomous. Thank you Thanks. so much. Everyone. Thank you so much, Sandra. <laughs> Sandra and, uh, and uh, Anne, I'm coming here to join you because, uh, my God, this has been f uh, f amazing, fantastic. Uh, you, s you had this sentence, there is no limit, think big. You are clearly, both of you, the example that there is no limit. And both of you, you are referenced in many ways as women as, uh, or ladies, uh, young girls as uh, students in STEM, now working in, in a STEM uh, in micro uh, companies such micro like Microphone, a multinational company. My God, we'll talk about that if we have time. We have a, a few minutes for questions, and they were asking you, uh, uh, in, well, AI is clearly helping accessibility. Uh, Sandra was mentioning even more because uh, disability is an accelerator for innovation in, in, in this sense. What's missing? You mentioned some of the the the, 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 wor the work you're doing, uh, but what it will be your, uh, as we say, your w wishful, uh, your bucket list of wishes that you will solve eventually in the future or in, in the near future? What's missing, and what else can AI do, or would you like AI to do? Do I, I, I can see I can see <laughs> Sandra thinking. <laughs> it's okay. a difficult but question. Actually. I can take a joke here. Like <laughs> this is like improvising a lot. But before that we were up there, she was saying I would like seeing an AI app to be able to tell me if a, if a guy eats beautiful or not. Of so course. So if, well, if, you, go, well, if you, you ask go. her, she can just dream a lot. Well, but dreams, uh, the first way of, of <laughs> artificial intelligence could help the, the app to learn <laughs> what are I like and what not that tells. Hey, this, uh, this um, uh, uh, guy is, is happy and he's also handsome, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, that also be... For example, for, <laughs> for uh, a menu uh, in the restaurant, it would be also useful to uh, not forcing me to read all the, the comprehensive, uh, the whole menu, but no. to learn about my, uh, what yeah. I like and what not, and directly suggest, hey, I, as I know you like this, <laughs> you have this of dishes, course. for <laughs> example, <laughs> to, to help me decide more quickly yeah. you know, and easily. But as, as Anne was, it's a very good point, uh, especially for the handsome or not handsome, because <laughs> that would help us a lot. Not only people with uh, visual disabilities, but everybody. And that you were mentioning that, uh, Anne, that a, a lot of the good, the good aspects, there are many good aspects, as, uh, as Sandra was saying, uh, AI and all this uh, innovation makes people with disabilities lives possible, but also other people with no disabilities, it helps our, our life uh, much more. You were mentioning uh, some, some examples of, of products or apps that actually help uh, help us uh, in our daily life. I mean, uh, t some people can be very indecisive if a, ha a boy is handsome or not, or what to choose in a restaurant, even even me. I'm in the car, sometimes driving, I receive all these WhatsApp, I and I say, please read them to me read them. I like yeah. this machine to, to speak to me instead of me having to read them. I'm risking my life uh, driving a car. So in this sense, are there any more, I mean, where is the limit? Would, would AI eventually become uh, all these innovations for everybody that people with disability and not disabilities you will use it in the same way? Or there will always be a, a bit of a difference? Or will that be a dream come true, Anne, Sandra? Yeah, for sure. Mm. 
I, I wouldn't I would like this uh, technology not to differentiate between pe people with and without disabilities because exactly. at the end I think that everyone have different needs and preferences mm -hmm. okay and that uh, um, anyone can experience any type of disability at any moment exactly. as I uh, said <laughs> and even we should think that we are aging into disability elderly exactly. people start losing losing their abilities of sight hearing and it's very important to keep in mind accessibility of everything. Yeah, exactly. Here I would <laughs> add that AI should respond to personalization. Exactly. So it's yeah. about personalizing my needs, personalizing my situation, exactly. uh, per personalizing my, my, my current yeah, status. Very, very important what you said, uh, Sandra, because all of us will have some kind of a dis disability in, in our lifetime. And you mentioned you differentiate the three types, the temporary, the I have it written down, the uh, temporary, the situational, situational, and the permanent. Yeah. So eventually we'll all, we'll all have us. Uh, so uh, th the dream would be that all this AI and technology will help us uh, equally the same way. Mm. Uh, because we're driving, I want the WhatsApp to be read to me, and Sandra needs it to be in the office or to read, th read the news, read the news for her. Uh, we're running out of time, but uh, obviously the question, clear question is, is as women, as I say, as uh, STEM, as working in a multinational, your reference to many people, wh we, who or what was your reference? How, how did you get di that passion for AI in your case, uh, mm. um, Anne or you, um, Sandra, how did you come up with that? And what would you recommend uh, women and uh, women parents? I mean, I have an 11 year old girl. So I would like her to study STEM and to go into and to, to follow your steps, be a you know a developer or a programmer in a multinational. Like, w how d how do we teach them? How do we uh, inspire them? Obviously, I'm gonna first of all show them this video <laughs> to see <laughs> you know uh, what you can what we can do. But how where do we start and what would you recommend? Yeah, for well, do you want to start in your case, Sandra? Uh, yeah. Sandra. You want to start no, you, start like you, and then how, I how do you have <laughs> those, those ideas so clear, being so young? Yeah. You know, no, like for me, technology. Uh, this might sound like a bit abstract, but it's kind of a power and a tool that I have to actually change the world. And like when I say think big, it's think big. And like for me personally, when I met Sandra, everything that had happened to me in the previous years was like a tsunami uh, as i said so everything changed and now i really think on the power of technology to to, to change things to drive innovation to change people's lives so that's like my daily motivation at so least. you always had it then yeah okay and it's in your okay. case sandra and that's my case also too because i think uh, i am when i tr uh, i want to inspire inspi uh, inspire um, um, children and you know uh, girls uh, I always tell them that uh, if they are creati uh, creative they can think of anything th they would like to, to achieve you know and, and then create a software a technology that can help them achieve that goal uh, so uh, this is what Anne has tell, uh, told that you can change the world you can uh, I, I, I started loving artificial intelligence because it's actually help us achieve things that wouldn't be possible by, by ourselves, you know, like what I tell the, the example of a person with hearing disability wouldn't be able to, to, to listen or to communicate without captions that are based on artificial intelligence. Um, because uh, artificial intelligence help us achieve things uh, easier and more productively, but for people with disabilities especially, it makes things possible. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> what a good, what a good uh, sentence to summarize all this, and it's a very tweetable, you know, to make our life easier for a lot of us, but possible for a lot as, as well. So, Anne, Sandra from Microsoft, thank you so much for being with us today.